is improving healthcare and the proven approach. Now that was mentioned yesterday by several people, uh, uh, including um, our, our chief medical officer. Uh, what I want to do is to give it a sort of bit of a flavour in the evolution of it and what's been happening with the principles, principles and how they've been involved and in which way they've been involved, by what methodology. And, but first of all, I want to give some context to that time when the Bevan Commission started thinking about what is it that one can be done in regard to a number of issues, and particularly carrying forward quality improvement and patient safety, which we've all been doing in the last few years. How can we do that perhaps in a better way with people getting all together and addressing it? And so therefore, we were talking um, about that time, this is Federal Commission Reports 2012 and 2013, about closing the gap. It was focused particularly on the money. But actually, what we came to conclude very quickly was that there was not just a gap in the funding, but there was a gap between what we were doing now in the NHS and what we are capable of doing. There was a gap there, and that gap was equally important as the funding gap. Money wasn't the only answer to this. And so we focused on what we are talking about today, which is prudent healthcare and the prudent approach, and that is not based solely on money. Everything we do in the NHS is obviously based solely on funding. But on the other hand, that's not the prime mover. When the Nuffield report came along, it sort of confirmed some of the figures that we produced in the Bevan Commission and added much more analysis and updated data to them. Then this slide now has uh, the welcome announcement only last week of additional funding for the NHS in Wales. And that is going to make a difference. But it's not going to make the great difference. The great difference is up in our game and having uh, closing that gap that I mentioned earlier, which is only slightly relevant to money. So we still got a continuing formidable challenge, and we had a much more formidable challenge when there was no additional funding whatsoever. In the Bevan Commission report, um, we mentioned the progressive funding gap relative to the other three countries. We talked about the Barnet formula two or three years ago, and expressed dismay that the Barnet formula was still in existence, and that Wales were actually, and they use the word advisedly, suffering from the less money that they received than the other three countries. I thought that the Scottish election, uh, referendum, sorry, the Scottish referendum might resolve that one way or another. It hasn't. Um, we still are unsure of what we're going to get from the Barnet formula, although the First Minister has insisted that it should be looked at, and we've got some yeah, weasel words are uh, being given by others who say that they will look at it. But Wales still does not benefit to the same extent as others, and it has an effect upon funding for the NHS. Obviously, the other issues you're well aware of, the additional demands and inflation pressures, and the annual cost savings we estimated then, and that's two or three years ago, was 5% to bridge the gap. That was a huge amount, and the um, uh, Nuffy report has sort of uh, made that uh, a little clearer and has estimated what it is that the different um, gap funding gaps would be according to how much money is put into the system from various sources. But the, the thing that we felt in our last Bevan report uh, on this matter was that the challenge is manageable for two years, we felt. Uh, the current report approach would not, the current approach would approach approach then, release necessary savings for the foreseeable future, and the current situation is unsustainable, and I think you can still say it's unsustainable unless we do things uh, to modify that, and that NHS wage was at risk. Well, that was uh, two years ago. I think the risk is far, far less now, because many things have happened, some of which have been happening in the last year in connection with prudent healthcare and, of course, in the release of extra funding, which the Minister referred to yesterday. But this is the, the statement that I think is still relevant. To close the gap without additional funding, NHS Wales will have to improve efficiency and will have to improve productivity because they're not the same thing. At a record rate, and sustain this for a period not seen either in the history of the NHS or any other country's health system. So it's still a very formidable challenge. The gap being the funding gap and the gap between what we do now and what we are very capable of doing, which would improve the delivery of the service. So we thought at the time, and we've been talking to the minister about this and his um, officials, 
that uh, we should look at the thing which we then call prudent healthcare. And so I'd like to just devote the rest of my talk about that and why now. Prudent healthcare was defined, as you will see there. It's a rather wordy um, uh, initial definition, but it was to try and get a grip, a grasp of what it is we wanted to do and what it is we wanted to define and what it is we wanted to capture people's hearts and minds. And that was the first definition, but it's changed, although the essential principles are still there. Caution, that doesn't mean slow, it means thought through. Safe, wise, which is what the word prudent means. And of course, careful budgeting. But that, as again, is a, an issue which is part of the whole rather than the only, only issue that we're addressing. But the main thing is, achieves tangible, measurable, material benefits and quality outcomes for patients. Our provisional principles, and let me make it quite clear that these are provisional. I'm taking you through the, the history of the, the evolution of the principles. These were the first ones that we articulated and the minister accepted as provisional ones. And we said they're not written in stone. These principles are things that will evolve. And not only that, we felt right in the beginning that they needed to be fleshed out. Different, different, different words can mean different things to different people. Words are very important. We understood what we meant, but a, a bit more work needs to be done in that area. So our principles were treating greatest clinical need first. That's an equity question. Do no harm, achieve measurable good, and I'll go into that a bit more. Do the minimum appropriate intervention by, to achieve the desired outcomes. Again, I'll talk a little bit more about that because people have misunderstood what is meant by the minimum intervention. Choose the most prudent care, openly together with the patient. Now that fits in with number six, which is co-produce health with the public, patients and partners. And then consistently and appropriately apply evidence-based medicine in practice. Those are the first uh, six principles. What happened then uh, was we tried to flesh out what some of them meant. And when doing that, we looked at the uh, conversation that takes place between the clini clinician and the patient and articulated these words that agreement between clinician, clinician and patient that the intervention is likely to affect a tangible beneficial outcome compared with other possible interventions. So this was going beyond the do no harm and you're all familiar with that by now but it's a major change. It's sort of revolutionary because we're saying we're not adhering solely to the Hippocratic Oath we're saying just don't apply do no harm, but achieve some tangible good, which is part of good practice anyway. And the intervention must do more measurable good than doing nothing. Similarly, the objective of achieving optimum health, which the circumstances permit, should, be the, should the intervention be agreed and adopted. Those words can mean various things to various people. We felt that if the intervention is justified, it should always be that which is the least necessarily required to bring about or to seek to bring about the agreed change. Many people have misunderstood minimum, meaning least, meaning minimal. It's not, it's the minimal, the least necessarily required based on the evidence which would bring about, which is likely to bring about a beneficial outcome. And I think that explanation is what is needed with all of the uh, principles and any modification of them. The minister said policy-wise, um, two statements uh, from recent speeches which describes to, to some extent uh, um, uh, prudent healthcare. But the second one is, I think, far more important than the first one because the first one is something that we were aspiring to anyway. If we wanted to actually achieve this, I mean, not let's just let, uh, let go into limbo. To rebalance the NHS in ways to create a patient centered system. We all talk about that, but we haven't yet achieved it. To remodel the user-provider relationship on co-production. And there have been conferences, and there have been uh, a thousand lives have issued, um, and the, the Chief Medical Officer launched last year, I think it was, a paper on co-production. But that is a, a new issue, I think, that the Minister wants to be included as Putin Healthcare. We included in our first few principles. And the idea is, in another phrase that he used, is to redraw the relationship between the citizen and the state in Wales. Prudent healthcare action? Now, when I'm asked by the media to explain to them what prudent healthcare is all about, 
I can't really find the words to explain what I've been trying to get across to you. So I've tried to capture it in another way. And I call this Daily Mail Speak. Stop doing things where there's evidence they don't work. We don't always do that. We have been looking, using interventions, not just in Wales, but across the developing and developed world, whereby we know that they don't work. There is evidence of inefficacy, and yet we still use them. Less, and less so than less so, uh, but nonetheless we do. Invest only in what it gives, what, what gives tangible benefits. That's important to just try and identify and classify uh, the various um, uh, uh, pieces of evidence to support a particular action. Improve quality and clinical outcomes, that's obvious, and involve patients and citizens in co-production. Another emphasis upon that. How do we do this in Wales? Well, I use the word big bang, and the minister also picked that up. Not glacial change, but big bang does not mean everything will be sorted out by tomorrow, will it? It won't. What it means is, we're not going to slow down on this. We're going to progressively and progressively, more and more, develop prudent healthcare and get it spread across all Wales, nationwide at once, not just having it developed in one particular area or one health board, get it across the whole spectrum of the country. And indeed, beyond. And cultural change. This is not going to happen unless there is cultural change. And I think I'm teaching my granny to suck eggs by telling you that, because you're all very well aware of it. Fashioning in the principles. What we did, the first ones, as I mentioned, were developed by the Bedwin Commission as provisional principles. We then had the Minister's speech where he had added flesh to some of those and clarified some of the others. And in April 2014, there were the prudent healthcare workshops to test the principles. This was done uh, and led by a thousand lives in Public Health Wales. And there were four workshops, 30 delegates, and you, as you can see, the people that were involved there, identify opportunities, indicate methods, comment on principles, the original Devon Commission principles. Those four workshops dealt with adult pain management, medicine prescribing, adult hearing loss, dizziness and tinnitus, and knee and hip problems. We thought, we thought we'd better look at those in the first instance, and how did prudent healthcare, did prudent healthcare have any basis in do, taking forward these issues in a better and more quality driven and patient safety manner? Um, sorry, yes. These were reported um, in a paper that was published um, by Peter Bradley and um, uh, Alan, Alan Wilson and a number of co authors. And it looked at achieving prudent healthcare in Wales. And I'm sure you've all seen that, and you should uh, refer back to that if you wish to gather any further information. And then what was launched yesterday, and let me remind you, those of you who haven't got it, this is the booklet, this is the one about the e-learning, and which actually uh, gives um, the comments uh, of people who produced the 10 chapters where they talked about what prudent healthcare meant to them and how it related to their area. And I think this is a very important document and has already been referred to quite a lot by the Minister. And I hope you will pick up not just this, but actually use the website itself. And last of all, I think, the latest five for the moment. But let's remember these are not yet in concrete. They are the ones that should drive us forward, undoubtedly, but they need, may need some change. And the Bevan Commission has been asked if they will look at these, uh, these principles. Are there other ones that need to be added? And do we need to flesh out and uh, identify what we mean by some of them? Now these, these are they, and already there is one principle in this five, five, this five list, which when we go out and talk to the people, to people who are not informed, to people in the third sector, they do not understand, organise the workforce around the only do what only you can do principle. We understand it because we interpret it in our language, in our climate, in our culture. They don't understand it. And if they don't understand it, we've got to look at it. So one of the things that we will be looking at in the Bevan Commission is looking at that principle to see if we can articulate it in the way it's meant and intends, oops, and intends to be. So those are they, and um, this, the Chief Medical Officer showed us those yesterday. This is the most important slide, I think, uh, and that is 
The prudent approach is not and should not be confined solely to the provision and management of healthcare. Prudent healthcare was the words that we used in the beginning, but actually it must also be applied to social care, health improvement, achieving a step change in the health of the people in Wales and remodelling the relationship between <coughs> citizens and NHS Wales based on co production. It goes beyond that. I was very pleased yesterday when the Minister referred to some remarks that I made to him about let's have a social movement. I think it's extremely important for everyone to own. It is, there is a need for a social movement. So we have still a huge real financial challenge. We must develop and adopt prudent healthcare and the prudent approach. It's everyone's business and we must develop and encourage a social movement.